Moral Maze every Monday and when there's a holiday every Tuesday. We have Moral Maze where we discuss uh, issues that uh, maybe don't mm, require a full segment each, but uh, together should be mentioned, should be discussed. I've said this before. Why? Because the other networks won't do it. Doesn't mean they're not important. It means they're very selective in their coverage of the news. Elisa Globe from Campaign Life Coalition joins us uh, this particular week. Uh, you've got your you got your phone out Too there. much medical terminology this week. We won't know what it means anyway. <laughs> well, let's begin with something non-medical then. We okay. give thanks, we give thanks, O oh Lord. Mm -hmm. Liberal activists deliver extended prayer thanking God for abortion. So I can understand people who are sort of passively pro-choice saying, well, you know, it's not a nice thing, but it happens. But to thank God mm -hmm. for something which is so horrible, who are these crazy people. The Democrats had a, a rally in front of the state legislature and uh, there was two Democratic candidates there I believe and one of the activists there um, thanked God for abortions, for taxpayer funded abortions, said that anyone who had an abortion it was a great blessing for them to do so. Um, just total mockery of uh, Christianity. Um, oh, so and other religions this is Iowa, well. isn't it? This, this is in Iowa. So they, they were trying to do the, an inverse, a satire on I, absolutely. That's right. what that's that's how it comes across. So I don't really understand how people, you know, can take these activists seriously when they're mocking Christianity. They're mocking. They're not attacking the point. They're mm. attacking the people. They in Texas they throw jars of urine and and you know at at, at pro-lifers. So you know if they have to go to these tactics to get their message across, obviously their message isn't that good in the first place. Yeah, you know the the, the throwing of excrement and, and urine. Mm -hmm. I've only seen that once in my life, and that's years ago when I used to cover Northern Ireland for the New Statesman magazine in Britain. This is the early 1980s, mm -hmm. 82, 83. And um, both sides, but, uh, alleged Protestant Catholic, Republican and, 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 and Loyalist, they, they would throw jars. Of, they had this thing about throwing jars of bodily waste at each other. Mm -hmm. They were idiots. They were morons. And now we have people who believe in a woman's right to choose, mm -hmm. uh, throwing the, the, this at uh, protesters. Have you noticed the attacks on Christians, by the way, the past two years in particular, have mm -hmm. become vehement and violent. They, they seem much bolder now. Absolutely. And I mean, especially especially during these pro-abortion and the kind of leftist rallies, um, even against, you know, even with the street preachers or different people at the gay pride parades, you see just this violent attack against them. Um, uh, you know, mocking their uh, mocking Christianity. You know, I've seen crosses being carried at pro-abortion rallies, um, like black crosses and things like that. So, mm. you know, they they're not attacking the actual issue; they're attacking the people and the beliefs of these people, which is kind of the lowest way that you can go in talking yeah. about a, a social justice. Is there not a Catholic cardinal or archbishop who said that uh, he may die in his bed, but his successor will die in prison, and his will die on the gallows, or something like that? <laughs> I haven't heard that, but I'm sure. <laughs> it's it's, it's, it's yeah. not as outlandish as some people might think. Mm -hmm. Scientists grow huge human brain tissue from stem cells. So there was, yeah, there was researchers in Austria and uh, they grew a three-dimensional brain um, and it was the first time they've ever done this and they say that it can help Parkinson's disease and other degenerative forms of brain um, disease by implanting the healthy tissue. Um, so it just goes to show you another, another example of how adult stem cells mm. have made progress and how embryonic stem cells have not. Embryonic stem cell research hasn't helped one person. Yeah, this yeah. we have to emphasize here that uh, uh, people who get their political ideology from Family Guy and, and The Simpsons assume mm -hmm. that people who are against embryonic stem cell research don't want stem cell research. Not at all. It's mm -hmm. the idea of taking an unborn life and using it for your own purposes. Mm -hmm. And we, we, scientists, we're not, but scientists now tell us no, embryonic stem cells are very limited, actually. We want adult stem cells, which are quite easy to get hold of. Absolutely. And this is what you can achieve. Mm -hmm. But uh, the, the, I, I, I respect other arguments, even though sometimes they can be rather crass. I try to respect them. I, I just rather like my arguments to be respected <laughs> as well, but that yeah. might be a fall on hope. <laughs> what else do we have here? Belgian doctors, good old Belgium. Yep. Belgian <laughs> doctors looking for disabled patients to be euthanized and donate their organs. Is this true? Oh, well, that's what it says in the article. The 21st European Conference on General Surgery, they basically had a report that said um, that, uh, you know, they are now euthanizing, taking uh, patients who have been euthanized and using their organs um, directly after and transplanting them um, for organ donorship. And they said that 12% of all lung um, implants uh, are from euthanized people. And uh, they said that with more public awareness, they hope to, this increases. So that kind of scares me because if public uh, awareness means that demeaning people who are suicidal, who are depressed, um, yeah. who want to be euthanized and saying you're better off for society and for the good of humanity if you just die and give us your organs mm. is the worst message that you can give and totally inequality. 
And anyone There's out there who thinks, well, it was, it's good, isn't it? Because, you know, people who are, they're not very, they're a bit smelly anyway, and they don't really <laughs> quite fit in. We can get rid of them and make uh, nice people healthy. Um, wait till you're the, the person who's on the fringes <laughs> of society, mm -hmm. whether it's uh, of your ethnicity or your sexuality, or because people will find all sorts of reasons to marginalize various groups. And I think there's a foggy line between being euthanized and having, doctor, having doctors kill you because they don't think that you're worthy in society as well and yeah. what that comes across. So there's a whole, there's so many other issues that come with this. Well, going way back to, uh, golly, I don't know, you probably weren't even born then, but the, the, the great advances were made in, in transplants in South Africa. Mm -hmm. There are still many activists who argue, and I don't mean fanatics, that one of the reasons that it could happen in South Africa was because the organs were available, because people were, were being killed mm -hmm. um, or not being kept alive, whereas in Europe and North America they would have been because of their skin color. And we don't mm -hmm. know if that's true or not, but mm -hmm. uh, the coincidence is rather jarring. Sure. Alison Redford, oh, I remember her, <laughs> named Calgary Gay Pride Parade Grand Marshal. Well, mm -hmm. I mean, is that a surprise? I mean, she, she reached out to the gay community for their support. She, she, it, it was reciprocated, mm -hmm. and now she's Grand Marshal. But that's separate than going to the Gay Pride Parade and not only going, attending, but holding an official position. Because at the Gay Pride Parade, everyone knows that there's lewd sex acts, there's nudity. Um, Even in fact, Calgary? <laughs> I'm sure everywhere, especially in Calgary, um, because it's so conservative. <laughs> but, um, but I mean, to, to publicly applaud such an event where these things happen. I mean, I can understand if you want support of the gay community and going to a worth, you know, a, a, an event where these things don't occur. Yeah. But to actually go where these things are publicly happening. And I mean, she should take a page, I think, out of Kathleen Wynne's book, who was uh, noted as the first Ontario premiere to attend the gay pride parade this year and then afterwards pictures you know went around with her with former um, advisor and and accused but, yeah. pedophile I, of Ben Levin. I would so. certainly say it's one thing to as a premier or a mayor to say everyone's included in this community and if you're gay you're part of this community mm -hmm. but if acts of illegality are taking place such as complete public nudity mm -hmm. or sex and we know in Toronto that they have happened mm -hmm. then it's also beholden on that official to say no that that's wrong that 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 is unacceptable whatever your mm -hmm. sexuality this is illegal that has to be stated but of course to even say that apparently now it must be homophobic so there you are yeah well even even you know people in the homosexuality homosexual community don't applaud the gay pride parade. There are parade, many so. gay people who say enough of this, but they're intimidated into silence. They won't speak out, but mm -hmm. uh, I, I wish they would. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Michael.